hello and what a great day to sew something wonderful. I'm Kia with Kia B and I'm so excited to be back with you again today. Um, I'm excited to be filming floss too. It's been a little bit and I'm just excited to show you what I've got. I don't think I have a ton planned today. In fact, I didn't even grab everything I've stitched on in the last month and a half. I think it's been maybe like six weeks. I don't know. It could, it could have been longer than that. I'm not sure. So I actually thought I would show you a bunch of kitted things, kit up things that I have. Um, so I'm going to kind of start with projects I've been working on and then I'll go to some haul. Maybe I just have a tiny bit of haul and it's all the usual like floss club, fabric, those sort of things. And then I thought we would just go through some of my kits. I didn't bring them all, but I thought I would bring some that I don't know, I'm most excited to stitch. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. How have you been? Um, we have been just fine over here, really uh, looking at the last month of school for the year. Um, I think we have a date now of when we will be done with homeschooling for this year. And uh, yeah, we're just a little over a month away from that. I think we've got like 40, 38 days left maybe. So I'm very excited about that. Um, we kind of get to this point at the end of the year where I'm like, oh, I'm ready to be done. But doesn't everybody, right? Even in public school? Uh, yeah, so I think, um, I think as a family, we're all excited to be close to the finish line, take a good summer break, and then uh, get started again next year. Uh, next year, I will have a high schooler, a middle schooler, and then our sweet little peanut. Uh, and so, you know, we're just, we're very excited. So with all of that being said, how about we get started into some stitching? I cannot remember when the last time is that I showed you this project. Um, and it's in my bin as if I put some stitches on it. So I thought I'd just show you anyway. I picked up this chart when I went to craft gallery in Jan January with some friends this is Mary Ann Priest. I just think this is such an adorable chart. I have really, over the last several months, come to love Hands Across the Sea. Um, there are just so many things that I would stitch and want to stitch, classes I want to take. I would have loved to be able to attend in um, Cincinnati the Queen, I believe it's the Queen City Sampler Guild, uh, is hosting a retreat with hats. And gosh, that would have just been fantastic. But I, it is on my bucket list to attend a treat with a retreat with her. But anyway, so I grabbed all the things I needed um, at Craft Gallery. And I had some fabric with me already. No, I grabbed fabric there. Uh, and so again, I can't remember the last time I showed you this, where I was at, but I'm just loving this so much. So I'm just down here in this corner. I did my own floss conversion just with things that they already had there. Of course, this calls for 100 threes. Um, and then they have a DMC conversion or Swaldage. That would have been lovely, but that's okay. I did a floss conversion into some beautiful overdides. So that is where I'm at on this. I want to pick this back up because it's so beautiful. Uh, the Eclipse, everyone is talking about it, right? The Eclipse is coming on Monday. Uh, we are in the path of totality and our sheriff's office yesterday or maybe, yeah, yesterday morning, put out a, um, a, a warrant. I don't know if it would be a warning or whatever, but anyway, that the, the current cloud coverage that is, I guess, expected, um, we are one of like two or three places that will actually be able to see the eclipse without cloud cover. And so, um, they said definitely expect more than we were originally anticipating. So, uh, it's, that's interesting and fun. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, this I started and I, 
I don't think I showed you this last time I filmed. Um, this is uh, Be Anxious for Nothing. And I got this from my Big Toe Designs on Etsy. It was a PDF download. Here is a picture of this. And again, if I've already showed you this before, I'm so sorry. But um, I just have a little, I dropped it on the floor. I just have a small little start with this. In the corner, that's where I'm at. So, love that. Got some border stitching done. We had a hospital day where we knew we would be there the entire day. Like from, um, we had to be there at 8 in the morning. And then our testing was over at 4.30. And so, I wanted to take something to start. And um, I just thought this was perfect. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus, Philippians 4, 6 through 7. And I just, I loved this and I had found it. Um, we've all talked about very... Um, you know, finding comfort stitching. And so I loved having that. Okay. I talked to you last time about what my method was going to be for catching up on 12 by 12 stitching and making good progress on that. And so what I've done is I have created a folder for, um, each project and I've taken, I'm looking at over here. I've taken my floss away from the project and put it on a ring and then hung it on uh, a tree, an ornament tree that's in my office. And what I've done is I have also put a label that I started this in 12 by 12 in 2020. And this is my third project. So whatever month that correlates to, third is March, then that's what I'm doing. And then, so I'm pulling out all of those projects. In March, I had four projects over the year. So I had one left from each time that I have done 12 by 12. I think in January, no, nope, in February, I maybe only had three. So that means I finished one of them. So this is my friend's house from Blackbird Designs. Jen Lee, when she and Brandon came to visit for my birthday one year, she was stitching on this and I just knew that I had to have it. So I don't think I've made any progress on this. But it was my goal to try and put some stitches in, in March that I don't think that happened on this project. Um, but that is my goal. That is what I'm doing. So that's my 2020 project. Here's my 2021 project. This is from Chessie and me. It is a needle book. And uh, so I've got, so make sure. So these are just folders. They go in a binder. And so I've got the chart, the picture, and then um, my fabric in there. And then I can go over to that tree and find its corresponding floss. And it lives in my Seiju bag, Seiju bag, um, that I was gifted over the summer. So I have the entire outline done of that needle book. So I should have pulled my April projects so that we could go over those together, but I did not. The next one for 2022, sorry, the next one for 2022 is a lovely Kathy Barrick. And I did not, I still have not put any stitches in this, but this is Kathy Barrick Needlework. I love that so much. I am working, I am the worst floss tuber. I didn't even tell you on any of the projects that I've shown so far what the fabric is. This one is 46 count bronze age by Be Stitch Me. And I have the tiniest little start in the corner. I was hoping to put some stitches in this, but honestly, I did not get a, a, a to what's the right word? I did not get a ton of stitching done in March. Um, so, but that's okay. Some months are just like that. And then my 2023 start, uh, for, which was my third start. So what I would have worked on in March is the 1816 and stone sampler. That's this. I got this sampler out of my sampler and antique needlework um, CD-ROM. I could not think of that word. 
CD-ROM. And so, and if you watch my 12 by 12 this year, that uh, you'll know that that's where I got most of my projects from. And again, did not put any stitches in on this, but this is where I'm at with that. So again, we'll just put these away and next March hope to make some more progress on them. And I know that isn't ideal to have projects that you're only working on once a year, but that is what works for me and that's what I'm going to stick with. So if, if I'm like, oh, I really want to get some work done on XYZ, then I can break my own rules and that is totally fine. Okay, um, I did join, I'm not a Facebook person. I am not on Facebook. I think that Kia B as a whole has a, a Facebook account still, but I am not active on it in any way, shape, or form. Um, I don't even know the login information. So um, I miss a ton of things. I have a lot of FOMO because I know I miss a lot on Facebook. Um, but in a conversation when we were on a Zoom, um, somebody had talked about joining a Hawk Run Zoom that meets once a month on a random Thursday night. Is it the second Thursday or the third Thursday? Anyway, it's a wonderful little group and they meet for a couple of hours on Zoom and they all stitch on their Hawk Run hollows. And I was like, I need motivation to work on my Hawk Run. That sounds amazing. And I would just love to meet more people in the community. And um, so I was not able to go this last month, which would have been the first month that I could join. I, in my in my real life job, I work for our homeschool organization and our team calls are on that exact same Thursday night. That won't last forever. In fact, um, I don't even know that it will last into the summer, probably not, but all of that to say, eventually I will be able to do that and I will be so excited, but I still pulled out my Hawk Run and worked on it that day. So I am working on the Houses of Hawk Run Hollow and I'm down here, I always start in the bottom left on every single project. So I'm down here and I actually had a block finish last month. And I don't think I had this finish when we filmed last, when I filmed last. Um, but I love this so much and I had just a ton of fill-in stitching left. And so over Zoom, I just did it one night when we were stitching with friends and I love it a lot. So I did change the color of the windows. As you can see in this, they are really red, but the way that my NPIs that those two colors are far too similar. I wasn't seeing a difference between where the window was and the house was. And so here you can see quite a bit of difference, but I was not seeing that in my actual dye lots. So I changed it to just a light color. I love it so much. I want to pet it all the time. This is just one of my favorite projects. It's a dream. Um, it's a good thing that it is a hawk run and it will probably never be finished because I won't ever want it to be finished. So anyway, it's a dream. I have loved working on it. I've got all my NPIs in this bag. It lives in this Bags by Beth that I got at StitchCon one year and it's the perfect size bag. This is on a 46 count B Stitch Me in the color Honey. And I just, I really do think it's the perfect color for this. It looks very much like the, the photo on the front. So let me get all this put away so that I don't mix it up. I, I love watching other people um, work on hawk runs. I think it's great. Um, Missy and Kathy in their video this week, um, two needles pulling thread. We all know who they are. Um, Missy and her friend Joy are hosting a sow in May and I, I want you to go watch Missy's video so you can um, look at that. Joy, I, I believe is Joyful Creations. It might be something different. I believe Missy said that she just changed her Instagram account um, and I could be totally wrong. But anyway, it's uh, Joy of the Carolina Stitchers. And so they are hosting a sow in May where you work on um, like dedicated block um, 
whether it, whether it be like Snow Village or any of the villages that have like one block at a time or a monthly series that you want to make progress on or Little House Nita Works has lots of those things. And so head over to Two, Two Needles Pulling Thread. Missy talks a lot about it in that video, but um, I might dedicate some time in May to my hawk run. Last year I did May or May Not, and I had a ton of fun doing that. I, um, I don't know. I, so I might do something like that again. I really enjoyed it. So what I did is I broke up, um, I had a bunch of whips and then, because what I didn't want to do is start 31 things again. I have so many whips and I want to make progress and control the ones uh, that I do have. And so what I did is I broke it up to where I, I laid out a certain number of whips and then if I worked on each of those whips for at least an hour in whatever time period, then I think it was six days. I worked on whips for six days. If I worked an hour on each whip, then on the seventh day, I was able to start something new. And so I really liked that. It That's why I called it may or may not because I may get to a new start or I may not get to a new start. And I was fine either way. So with the kits that I have, you'll see like there are a lot of things that I would like to start. So I'm kind of playing around with whether I'm going to do that or not. And instead, I might kind of incorporate the two. I don't want to steal any ideas whatsoever, but I might incorporate the two. And if I work on my hawk run an hour every day, then on the seventh day, I could start something new. So I might, as I'm saying that out loud, I may do that and just do may or may not. So if you'd like to join me, you're always welcome to. Um, I don't do anything exclusive. So if if that is something that interests you, I can definitely talk more about it on the next uh, the next time I film. Hopefully it'll be before May, but. Okay, my obligatory haul that I, so I am a part of the color and cotton fabric of the month. I will say that I have one in the mail, like it's in the mail coming. Um, so I only have one to show you, but it's beautiful. And I very much realize how fortunate I am to be in the color and cotton um, club, fabric club. I get the 40 count um, and uh, this month it's beautiful. It's a, it's a blue and it is called Drizzle. It's definitely a blue gray. It's beautiful. So I always get 40 count from them. I love my color and cotton fabric so much. Okay, and then I've got two months of Be Stitch Me to show you. So this is Vanilla Latte. I get 46 count Vanilla Latte from um, Brandy's uh, Fabric of the Month. I have been in Brandy's Fabric of the Month from the moment it started, and I love it. And then I have a uh, 46 count Gold Rush. That is pulling extremely orange and yellow, and it is not. It is, excuse me, it is like a burnt gold is the best way to describe it. So very pretty. This will be great for like tiny little cheese it pillows or something like that. And then I also get her silks um, that Brandy does every month. So I've got two packs of those. I love this color combination. Seems very spring-like to me. I think it's beautiful. Okay, that is all of my haul in less than 20 minutes. Look at me go. Um, nope, I lied to you. <laughs> I did get some haul from um, a D stash, and so I'll show you that. Um, okay, so I ordered a little bit of D stash from the Calculated Stitcher, and I just thought some things were beautiful. So this is Elizabeth Chester's 1843. This is from Cross Stitch Antiques. And I just think this is so pretty. It says to, let's see, to teach me to feel another's woe, to hide the fault I see, that mercy I to others show, that mercy shows to me. I thought this was just beautiful. So that is that reproduction. Um, it says, a mother, Elizabeth Chester's, and daughter, Sarah Chester's, duet. 
Um, and this is an antique sampler reproduction. Uh, let's see. The floss of the reproduction is done in a Vera Soie and Soie d'Alger. I have not stitched with either one of those yet and I would really like to. So that's definitely gonna be on my list to kit up. The next one I found was from Victoria Rose Needle Arts. This is Christina uh, Junior, Jun Juna, eighteen thirty four. It said, "I have." It says, "I have done this to let you see what love and care my parents had for me." I am just absolutely smitten over schoolgirl samplers. You're gonna have a reflection on this. Okay, cover your ears and let me open this for a second. I'll do it quick. Um, I just, I taught a class, I, let me finish opening this. That is the epitome of not doing it quickly, I'm so sorry. So I taught, um, a class of homeschool moms, um, I told you guys this, in the, in the winter, um, uh, during Christmas break, to stitch, and we talked all about school samplers and the, um, the meaning behind a lot of these young samplers and this now hangs in my office so that I can just look at it forever and ever that was a gift from Liz I just love I love that idea and so when I saw this I knew that that needed to be in my collection look how gorgeous this is I mean, it's just stunning. So this is from Victoria Rose Needle Arts. Um, this is from 2017. That border is just stunning. I love that border and I love the inside borders as well. So we've got the border that goes all the way around and then you have the borders that divide sections. And I just think it's stunning. The little red schoolhouse and everything. I'm sure it's their home. It's not a schoolhouse, but we'll pretend that it is. Um, oh, okay. So Christina Jenner, um, it's J-U-N-O-R. And she gives you instructions immediately that it's pronounced Jenner. Stitch her delightful sampler in the year 1834 when she was just 10 years old. Little is known about Christina, but her sampler is a typical of Scottish samplers from the same time period with its strong red and green color choices. The seven-tailed peacocks, crowns with sets of initials, urns of flowers, and simple house motif. The red-stemmed plants may be uh, some commonly found in a Scottish garden such as dogwood. And then they go on to give you just a ton of information. And I absolutely, gosh, I just, I... The last two years, probably, I have just gone down this sampler hole where I just want that, I want my walls filled with them. And so I love them. I'm so glad that my friend Holly has really just captured my love of hats too. Um, and really just cheered me on and, and quite frankly, uh, quite frankly, she has, she has, um, she has really inspired me with that. I couldn't think of the right word. Okay, and then I bought this as with all the DMCs. She was de-stashing this. This is uh, Elizabeth Harding, 1791. Speaking of hands across the sea, um, her charts are just stunning. I mean, they are just, if you've not seen one, they are just color throughout the entire booklet. I will just... This one is not bound with the spiral. It is, um, is it staple? Let me see. It is not. Yes, it is. I'm sorry. Yes, it is staple. Let me just hold this back here and let you see all of her charts are colored. They're stunning. Beautiful. Um, and so here this is. Look at these flowers down here that, oh, down to the end, like the rug that sits outside. This is Elizabeth Harding, uh, 1791. I'm not sure if I said that, but. It's 
beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. So this is definitely going on my summer start list. And then I have all the DMCs to be able to um, start that whenever I do. And I have so much fabric. I am not worried in any way, shape or form that I don't have fabric to, uh, to pair with that. It'll be beautiful. Okay, would you like to see some of the things I have kit up? Um, I'll just kind of go through them because why not? So this, you guys, you know how we do things and we're like, oh, that's cute. She's still new to cross stitch or, oh, that's cute. She's, you know, she just hasn't learned yet. So this was supposed to be, this is a Tiger Lily uh, Project Keeper. This was supposed to be my new kits. Anything I had kitted was going to go in here and that's all I was going to have. And so that, I mean, that didn't last more than a week, a month. I don't know. So I have three projects in here that I've kit. My idea was that that was, I was going to start. I mean, that I typically start, but I don't because I buy kits like that when people are de-stashing or I find something and I want to kit it and then I'll save it for 12 by 12 or whatever the case may be, but that is not what happened. And that's okay. Um, in all things, be exceedingly diligent from Needlework Press. And the way this chart cover is, let me open it. So that is the chart in totality. Nothing groundbreaking. We've all seen this before, but I, I just love it. Uh, and I said when I bought this and showed it to you in our house, uh, we talk about diligence quite often. And so um, <clears throat> Liz Matthews was hosting, um, was she hosting a sal with this one on her Patreon? Or did I see something on her Patreon? Because I don't remember. Anyway, I had this in my stash and I loved it so much. And I said, I'm tired of not stitching it. So I kit it up and I'm still not stitching it, but it's kit with DMCs and it's ready to go. This is the Forest Sampler. She released this last year. So this was a last year release. I, lo I love this. I think it's beautiful. So I feel like I could, I could work on this as like motif completing. And I feel like you could stare at this forever and still find new things, which is, which is really fun. Okay. Um, I got to see again, the beautiful, beautiful soul that is Judy Whitman. Um, when I was at keep, when I was at, I'm sorry, stitch away the, uh, keepsakes host. And she was the guest designer and, um, in 2023. And um, I won. No, I did not win. She gifted this to me. She has this book. It is no longer in print, uh, but she has a few and, and you can still find some out there. But she has this book called Affectionately Yours. And she gifted this to me that weekend. We had just the most lovely time and I just so much enjoyed getting to talk with her and know her a little bit better. But I kit this up. Um, one day when I was at Keepsakes, Holly Neal and I were both there and we both grabbed the floss for this. I think either she was kidding it and I loved it or I was kidding it and she loved it and we both have the book and so does Tammy Totten. So we were going to sell this together and then I think we maybe forgot. So I have all the floss for that ready to go. I think it's beautiful. So I keep it all together so I won't lose it. So that's the three projects that live in this bag better go a little bit quicker or y'all will get bored real quick. Okay, this I picked up at um, Always in Stitches over um, in December when I went out there. This is Christmas Quaker. I loved this. Someone was working on this in the store. So I picked up this and then I picked up, I actually picked up a 32 count and I'm going to do over one with this. Isn't that so beautiful? This is a 32 count hand dyed by Stephanie in Spanish moss. 
I thought it was very pretty to do an over one. And I picked up the color Noel. Is it Noel? Yeah, by Weeks Dye Works to work on that. So I just thought that would be so pretty. So that is kit up and ready to go for whenever I want to start that. Um, I take a girl's trip uh, the very first weekend of December every single year. That would be a fantastic start because that's very little stitching that I have to take. And the girls that I go with, they don't stitch. So um, that would be something small that I could take. And as we're sitting in a winery, I can, I can stitch that. Okay. If you are, if you've been watching for very long, you know that you're going to see this and go, but didn't you already have that started? So I've actually restarted this three times. Be thankful. I'm sorry. This will be my third time. The first time I didn't love my fabric. The second time I messed up so poorly on the house. It was, I felt like it was not fixable. So I have this kit up and ready to go. This will be a Thanksgiving start for me this year. And I have all the floss contained in the box because this is actually a ton of floss colors. I love those little boxes. This I picked up at Stitch Away in 2023 with the Lottie Daw. Um, I saw the model and just thought it was beautiful. In the forest, I should have started this last weekend for Easter and I did not. And then I've got some lakeside linen. Um, nope, I'm sorry, fox and rabbit. This is 46 count fox and rabbit in the color elephant run. So I think I want to find a really pretty off-white cream color to get that started. Okay, next I was completely influenced um, by a friend at um, Stitch Away this year as we were talking and she's talked about this on their channel several times. Um, this is the book Let Love Rain. Liz gifted this to me last year after market and um, I actually, I love the full size pattern that's in here but the one that I was influenced to go ahead and kit was this one. Um, love your family. It says if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. I thought that was just, oh, I love it so much. So I have that kit up and ready to go. I'm a really good copycat, you guys. <laughs> I'm really good at seeing something someone else does and go, oh yeah, I want to do that too. I invite myself to a lot of things. Uh, speaking of, this is Feast of Friendship by Blackbird Designs. Several ladies started this in the fall, and I have it kit and ready to go and just decided I was drowning a little bit too much in my whips and did not start it. But I've got this kit up and ready to go. I think the fabric I chose, I did my own floss conversion. I'm missing a few because I think I didn't have a few or some, I don't remember. But I'm going to do this on 40 count from Color and Cotton. That's unnamed. But look how beautiful that is. So, got a nice big fat quarter for that. I love it. I even have a note in here of the floss I need to finish ordering because I don't have it all. But I had enough to start it. I just didn't start it. Sometimes you just have to know when you have too much and you need to slow down a little bit. Okay, um, and the next ones I have, and I'll just tell you, I keep all of my kits in these Ikea Ziplocs. They're just simple to throw everything in and store on the bottom shelf, and so that's just what I do for that. I did order some of those mess, mesh bags from Amazon. We'll see if I like those, but this is Teresa Kogut Land that I love. I have had this kit for probably three years now. When did this come out? 2020. So I've had a kit since 2020. It's stunning. And I just have so many large projects from her started. I need to finish one before I start another one. Like for the love of nature. That is one of my favorites. And I have the matching quilt kit. I need to get it done. So I need to get both of those done. Okay. The next one is the engraver's chart. 
by Hello from Liz Matthews. What I found for this is actually um, some legacy linen in um, 45 count. It's beautiful. It's like a raw color. And I chose um, gassed wrought iron to do for that. So again, that is the engraver's chart and I want to finish it exactly like this. I love, I love that look and I think it will be stunning to hang in my office. Also, this is a great chart if you're looking for different alphabets. This is a great chart to just have on hand. Um, I know Christy from uh, the Foss Foss and Cousins has talked about that she texted me and said, what is that one from Liz with all the alphabets? So that is it. Okay, then I have one that was gifted to me um, by a sweet friend. This is a Kathy Barrick kit that she, that uh, my friend gifted me. This is, I give you my hand and I've got all the floss to do that. I have not decided if I like it on the darker fabric or the lighter fabric. I'll probably go with something in between, but I think it's beautiful. And seeing these mother of pearl buttons, I have another kit that Kathy gifted me over the summer last year, and it has some buttons. Um, the kit, you finish it with some of the Mother of Pearl buttons on it, and she gifted me some from her collection, and I just find them to be such a treasure. So I love this look. So I've got that with the silks and everything to use. Okay. This next one is, and be kind to one another. And this is the companion actually to the Be Exceedingly Diligent that I showed you a bit ago um, from Needlework Press. So this is the companion to it. And I have this kit up with 46 count flax. I also bought this at Ca Craft Gallery in January. I thought I bought for a friend so that's my next one I need to buy because I thought I bought it and kit it up and I can't, I can't seem to find it. And it would be with both of these, so I'm not sure. So I bought that, love it so much. This next one is from Blackbird Designs. It is Quaker Garden and this is Loose Feathers Pattern 19. beautiful. I love the muted green color that this is stitched on. I love how everything doesn't pop out. It very much is natural, kind of blends in together. So I love that. I picked this one up at Craft Gallery and then fully kitted this from them. This is the Scarlet House, and this is called Samplers. Now, I'm not going to lie. If I would have saw this on the shelf, I probably would not have purchased it. But I saw it hanging and framed at Craft Gallery, and that's really what changed my mind. So I've got that. I'm going to do it on a piece of fabric that I bought from them that is also um, uh, called Flax. It's a very like raw, natural looking linen. That's a great 12 by 12 start. So I might hold on to it for that. Depends on what I do as if I do like a theme for 12 by 12 or just 12 things I really enjoy. I feel like I need to be grounded from 12 by 12 until I make some good progress. Is that a thing? This you guys have seen because it was in my stitch away haul for this year. I bought a piece of 5363 count legacy linen in the color Wood Woodmond Borrow. And I'm doing the color um, Black Coffee from Classic Colorworks. And this is a Dorothy Stratton sampler from Red Barn Samplers. It calls for swamp water. I really liked black coffee against that 5363 count. I just thought it was gorgeous. Um, and I said at Stitch Away that I was going to start this immediately, and I still have not done it. 
but I love a good monochromatic sampler, so that's beautiful. This one is a kit that I have for um, Kathy Barrick. And actually I can just show you through this bag. And I have actually started, um, already done a small little piece of this. I pulled out, I believe this one to make some cheese up pillows to go on that um, two tiered tray that I made for um, as a stitch con brag table. I made like the tiniest little cheese up pillows and those came from, oh, some of those flowers came from this motif or motifs came from that. Okay, I have two more kits, bear with me. Okay, this one is um, from Exemplar and this is called Forgiveness. This is from 2007. It is a beautiful Quaker. I just love, I don't, the, the colors seem very fall to me. And so I've kit this up in, with all the called for conversion to DMC. And I just have to pull, um, I've got to pull some fabric for this, but I think it'll be gorgeous. Also this, you can see from this, like this blue, I will switch that out. I, I don't. I don't see anything that could be that blue within the pattern. So I'm kind of wondering if either I picked, if I just grabbed the wrong skein or something, but we'll see. And you know, it's the original called for is NPI. And you know, sometimes the NPI to DMC conversion can be a little bit wacky. So, okay, my last kit up project. Um, the pattern was a gift to me from uh, Stitch Away and it's just beautiful. It's Love Abide from Lottie Da. This looks really small. It is not. Um, it is 254 by 243. So it's actually quite large. I have all the floss ready to go. I just have to pull um, fabric for this. I love this. I loved seeing the model. The model is just stunning. So I think that is really, really pretty. Cannot wait to start that. Um, yeah, so that again, that's not all my kits. I probably have, I don't know, five or 10 more down there. I just thought those were probably the most interesting, the ones I'm most anxious to start soon. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. That was just fun for me to flip through them. I, this will be no surprise to anyone who's watched me for very long, but I changed my office again. It is now downstairs um, instead of up in the loft. My long arms sit up in the loft because that's about the only place it will fit. But I changed my office to come downstairs so I can be kind of at the center of the home again and um, maybe be able to utilize my space a little bit more. And so when I was reorganizing my things last weekend, I went through my kits again and I was like, oh, you know how you just, you grab things and you just want to look at them and explore them again. And so that was a ton of fun to be able to do that. And I just thought I would share a little bit of that with you. Um, I am always open to a good sell. So if you see something, you're like, oh, I have that. Um, you know, it gives me a reason to start something. So, all right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us on the hive today. I say us, thank you for joining me in the hive today. And I very much appreciate uh, just spending some time with you. So thank you so much. And I hope you guys have a great weekend.